friends and welcome back to my channel. This is Nova Gnome Creations and I'm Nova and I'm so happy to see you today. I hope that you are doing well and that you've had a good week. It is Friday which means it is Community Spotlight Friday and it also means that you have made it through another week. So good job to you. Pat yourself on the back especially if it was a hard one. You made it through and it is time for the weekend. So if you are new here, welcome to my channel. I'm so happy you decided to join us and I hope that you feel comfy and cozy here in our little cozy corner of YouTube. If it isn't your first time here, thank you so much for coming back, my Nomi. I hope you and your loved ones are all doing well and taking care and hopefully staying out of the intense heat if you're living in one of the areas that is really hot like I am. Uh, I live in Texas and it has been excruciatingly hot. So definitely a uh, good thing I'm an indoor human. <laughs> Uh, I am here today to do Community Spotlight, so if you don't know what Community Spotlight is, really quickly, I will let you know. Uh, Community Spotlight is every Friday here on my channel. I come on here and I show you guys what I have been up to, and I also, more importantly, show you guys what you have been up to. So what that means is, anyone watching this video, that means you are a member of my community, you can send in your makes if you would like to. Uh, every Friday I go into my email, which is in the description box below this video. It's novanomecreations at gmail.com. Uh, and I go in there and I pull out all of the community spotlight submissions that I've received. If you would like to send one in, all you have to do is take a picture of your projects or project. You can send as many as you want or just one if you want to. Uh, take pictures of it, put it in your email, and put in the subject line community spotlight. And you can put any information you want to in that email as long as you make sure to include your name. Uh, let me know what name you would like me to credit you with in the video. I know sometimes people uh, send me emails from uh, email accounts that have their real name attached to it and maybe they don't use their real name on YouTube. Uh, maybe they go by an alias or maybe they only go by their first name and they don't want their last name said. But some people do want their whole name said. So it's just easier for all of us to make sure that uh, everybody gets what they want and uh, there's no confusion if you let me know what name you'd like me to use. So, after I show you guys what I have been up to, I will commence the Nomi montage. You guys are the Nomis, and the montage is of your makes. Uh, it does not have to be crochet, by the way. Uh, you can send me anything that you made. So, literally anything under the sun. Um, the creativity is endless. You can do whatever you want. If you consider it a creative endeavor, you can send it in. Um, so, what have I been up to? Well, I've been working on this hat which I had shown you guys for, I believe, last week's um, Whip Wednesday. And I was saying I was going to work on this, like, witch-style kind of hat with the longer uh, pointy top and that's going to kind of hang down. And then it's getting to um, a wider point. So if you guys remember, I staggered, I've been staggering my color changes so that it's got kind of this, like, I don't really know how you would call it, um, almost like stepping, kind of like stair steps effect where you can see as you rotate it, the different places that I have changed colors um, and, you know, the jog isn't all in one row, basically. Um, and I've also been doing um, some random back loop only rounds just to add some texture to it. Um, I've kept all of my uh, rows of colors uneven. I didn't make them, any of them, the same um, amount of rows or rounds. Um, and this is what it's looking like. It is almost done. I'm currently working on the brim. I want to get a nice big poofed out brim and then it will be tentatively done. I actually am considering adding some embellishments to it, like maybe going and adding some flowers or like something around, um, like to trim it out around right before it poofs out. Um, but here's what it is currently looking like and I'll go ahead and stick it on. And you won't be able to see the whole thing because it's very tall. So here is what it's looking like. But like I said, I want this to stick out a lot. So that is what I'm currently doing. But I expect to finish that tonight. Kind of get you guys back onto the right <laughs> frame here. But here you can kind of see it all. And you can, you know, fold this over as little or as much as you want. I'm considering putting um, some like pipe cleaner or something in here and maybe curling the end of it. Um, but I'm not sure yet. Um, but that is what this is looking like. And I used lots of sparkly yarns. And I went with like blues, blacks, purples, and greens were like kind of my colors here. And I was like, I'll do as many of them as I want. 
So I've got a variety of blues, blacks, purples, and greens. Here's kind of a close up and I just got home from Hobby Lobby. Uh, well, I just got home from a little outing with the hubby and I got polyfill finally. So I can get back to making amigurumi. You guys know I was on a little bit of an amigurumi hold. I had to uh, stop working on them until I was able to get some polyfill. So I got some polyfill for one, which was the, uh, the biggest purpose of going into Hobby Lobby. Um, and then I also got a few clearance items and I got a little bit of yarn um, and I thought I would show you guys what I got. So um, to start out with, I will show you guys the clearance items I got. And these actually do have to do with crochet because um, recently I have had like an influx of people wanting, um, you guys remember that crocheted mushroom bag that I made? If you've been here a while, you probably remember it. Um, well, I gifted it to my sister and a lot of people have been seeing it. Um, so I've had a quite a big influx of people, uh, interested in purchasing one of those. So I need to make some bags coming up soon. So um, when I saw that they had buttons and stuff in the clearance, I was like, perfect, because I don't have big buttons um, in my like stash. I'm working on building a button stash, but right now I don't have big buttons in there at all, only little buttons. So I was able to get a couple of big buttons. I got two of these because these ones were only four, uh, 74 cents and they are normally $2.99. And I was like, oh my gosh, 74 cents. And these are like really big, like heavy duty buttons. Um, and these will look perfect on like that mushroom style uh, bag, like any bag of that kind of style. These buttons are going to look so good on. Try to focus for you guys. I'm also having some lemon water from uh, Panera um, with my little unlimited drink pass thing that I always tell you guys about. Um, it is really hot outside today. So that is hitting the spot. So I got these. Um, I also got two like packs of semi smaller buttons. So this is like, I would call this like an extra large button. And then these are probably like, I don't know, a medium or a large button, these ones, but they come with two. One was 99 cents and one was 49 cents and I think that these will also be really good for bags too kind of give you guys an idea the white one has like a marbling kind of to it like a translucent and a white and then the black one is just solid black but it's got these cool cutouts and then I also grabbed this they only had one in the clearance but it is a swivel slash snap hook and it comes with two of them. And this would be perfect for attaching straps to a purse. Um, you could like crochet right onto here and then they could actually be removable with these. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I went ahead and grabbed one of those. And then I also grabbed these swimsuit hooks for 49 cents because um, I actually have a commission right now to make a um like a uh what's the word I'm thinking of crop top <laughs> uh like a halter styled crop top I don't know if I'll use these for this particular project but I might want them um to make like another one in the future that's like a different style so whether I use them on this one or I use them on a different one for 49 cents I just went ahead and grabbed them um, but these are like swimsuit hooks, like to, to like put, um, straps on or to attach in the back. It could go either way. Looking at these, they remind me of the ones where like they attach right here. So either way, I thought they might be fun to play with. So those are what I got for my button haul. And then we also grabbed some of this, um, brush cleaner because this brush cleaner was, a uh, dollar seventy four, and it is normally seven dollars. And the hubby does mini miniatures, um, painting miniatures. So I thought that this would be really good for him. And then, <laughs> before I get to the yarn, we also grabbed some wax melts for our stash. You guys know that I love these Hobby Lobby wax melts. I've talked about them before, but just real quick, I'll tell you guys my favorites so that you can look at them when you're at Hobby Lobby if you haven't. So grandpa's chair is one of my absolute favorites. Oh, Yuri and Caleb are coming to visit. Hi. Hi. 
Caleb is my hubby, if you don't know him. <laughs> and Yuri is this kitty that is running away. <laughs> She's so cute. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, Grandpa's chair is one of the wax melt scents that we really like. This one is um, music. Is that weed? O-U-D. Is O-U-D weed? I don't think so. Ode? Ode? <laughs> I don't know, you guys. Music, Ode, and Bergamot. Either way, this smells like, um, amazing. It smells like, um, man, what would you say? What, how would you explain that? It smells so good. It's a very, like, musky... What would you say? Sandalwoody. It smells like the old cigar shop in the mall. It's yeah. Not yeah, that's a good way of putting it. It smells kind of like a cigar shop. Like in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> no, it smells absolutely amazing. This is probably my favorite one. I feel like their description of the scent does not tell you what it smells like. But maybe bergamot. I don't know what bergamot smells like, but music and O U D. I don't know what that is. It smells so good though, but it's like a um kind of like a cologne-ish sort of scent and like musky kind of incense -y sort of smell. I don't know. <laughs> and then this other one is maple and cream latte. You can kind of discern what this is just by the name of it, but it says coffee beans, coconut milk, and maple. This one smells absolutely amazing, especially if you like coffee, if you like like fancy coffees. Mm, this one smells so good. And then the last one is Jelly Bean. And we actually My got... Favorite. That's Hubby's favorite. We actually got two of this one because the last few times that we've bought these, they have actually been not having Jelly Bean for some reason. Um, but Jelly Bean is explained as a fruity melange of strawberry, pineapple, banana, grape, and orange. I think that's a pretty good explanation. It's a very fruity scent. It smells like Jelly Beans. <laughs> yeah, it does smell like Jelly Beans. <laughs> I figured you probably wanted to smell that one. Here, you can actually take these with you because I know you're planning on replacing the wax melts. Um, but those are our favorite um, scents from Hobby Lobby. And I will tell you guys a secret, um, at least at our Hobby Lobby, every time the yarn is on sale, the wax melts are also on sale. Um, I don't know if it's like that at every Hobby Lobby, but it just so happens that the um, alternating sale weeks that they do, the wax melts and candles and like incense, uh, I don't know if they do sticks, but they do uh, incense oils um or fragrance oils um they're always on sale at the same time as the yarn and they do a 40 percent off on those they're only 2.99 which is like the normal price for wax melts like everywhere you go pretty much but 40 percent off of 2.99 is actually a really good price so if you haven't smelled their wax melts and you like wax melts i highly recommend it and now to the yarn <laughs> so um i got this yarn which I just thought was so pretty. I actually walked by it, thought it was really pretty and was like, man, I wish I had a reason to need that. My light is like really blowing this up. Let me, there you go. Now you can kind of tell. Um, this is considered blush sparkle. That's the colorway. Um, it's basically like a really peachy light peachy pink i know that it's really blowing it up actually here let me try turning my light down there you go okay so it's like a really like peachy pinky light sparkly color and i walked by this and i was like oh that's really pretty like for some reason it just really caught my eye this color is like very um I do wish it caught this color better. It's just like a really unique color. Like, um, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. I, I, I thought of it kind of like a flesh tone, um, but like a little bit more pinky maybe. But anyway, so I saw this color and I thought it was so pretty. And uh, while I talk, I'm going to mess with the lighting and maybe it'll give you guys a better lighting. Um, but I didn't think of anything like that I needed off the top of my head and I wasn't really there to, um, like just shop for normal yarn. Don't mind my dog crying cause he, my husband shut the bathroom door <laughs> and he, she, she's like, I want in there. Um, but anyway, I wasn't really there to like shop. I went in to get polyfill and you know, 
I'm really like bad about <laughs> finding other things. So anyways, I wasn't planning on getting it. I saw it. I thought it looked cool. And then I was looking at the other yarn and there actually is a yarn that I um, kind of was looking for when I was in there. And then I did a double back to it because I realized what I could use it for. Um, you guys know I've been talking about making a floral troll doll um, and I'm still planning on doing that. I think I'm done messing with my lighting. Now I just got to remember what setting I normally have it on. I think this one, maybe. Um, anyways, so you guys know I've been talking about making this floral troll doll. If you haven't been around, um, I'll just tell you real quick. I've been, ma I've been thinking about making a floral troll doll. Um, was it last month or the month before last? I think it was in May. I made a floral unicorn. It was so cute, if I do say so myself. I loved how it came out. Um, if you haven't seen it, you should totally pop back and look for it. I think that the um, thumbnail for the video, you'll see a floral unicorn as the thumbnail. It's a uh, bipedal unicorn, so it's standing on two legs. Um, it's like a doll version, you know, like a you know, humanized version of a um, unicorn. And I loved how that came out and it made me really want to make a floral troll doll because for some reason I've just been like itching to make a troll doll. If you don't know what a troll doll is, um, they were really popular and they're actually popular again. Um, but when I was a kid, they were really popular. Now they have actually like new troll dolls and they did like a trolls movie, which I haven't seen, but they were those little plastic dolls that had the big poofy hair that like stood straight up. Um, and it was like brightly colored and they might have like a jewel on their belly button, like a little jewel. Um, I'm sure you guys all know what they are. Uh, anyways, for some reason I've been like really like, I just kind of have been wanting a troll doll in general, like just like an old like tro troll doll from my childhood because they don't look the same now, they're different. Um, but then it occurred to me, I was like, oh my gosh, I could crochet a troll doll. And then my, my head just kind of was going crazy with that idea. So I was like, I have to do it. And then I'm doing this um, hashtag moose flower power cal, which is every month you make something floral. So I was like, oh my gosh, I can do a floral troll. I'm totally here for it. Like this idea is just like, I'm doing it. Um, but then I ran out of polyfill and I was like just busy last month also. And I just never got to make it yet, but I plan on making it still. So I thought that this would make a good skin tone. Hey, you can kind of see it actually right now. I don't know why I just like decided it would show up better. So I thought this would make a good skin tone. I'm like, you know, why go like just skin tone when you can go like sparkly, adorable skin tone, you know, gotta go extra, like always go extra when you have that option. So I got that. And that colorway is Blush Sparkle. That is, and I love this yarn and it'll be a worsted weight, you know, all that good stuff. This is a metallic. This is what it looks like if you're looking for it on the shelf. Sporkly. And then the other yarn that I got, which is actually, uh, I was looking for this, is for that halter top, uh, halter crop top that I'm making. Um, the colorway request was like something kind of 70s boho. So boho is like bohemian styled, if you don't know what boho is. And I settled on this yarn. I wanted to get something that was good for a wearable. So I got a low pill fiber. Um, this is the Yarn Bee Soft and Sleek, and it is in the colorway of uh, Auburn Delight, okay? So this is a worsted weight yarn, um, and it is a low pill acrylic, but this is what it looks like, and I got two skeins of it. Um, since it is just a halter crop top, I think this will be enough. Um, she's also a pretty small person, like very small person. So um, I think this should be plenty. Believe it or not, these are the same uh, colorway. Um, when we picked it up, I was like, what in the world? Those aren't the same colorway, are they? They are. They're reversed. So the middle of this one looks like the outside of that one. And the middle of this one looks like the outside of the other one. So um, that actually kind of is perfect because that means that when I'm working on them and run out of one, I should be able to pretty perfectly segue into the other one without it looking jarring. Um, so honestly, I was actually really excited about that. But these are what I decided to do that with. I think that this is a good colorway for 
like a boho 70s kind of vibe. You guys have to have to let me know what you think. Um, like I said, I was just looking for something good for a wearable that um, kind of fell into that color spectrum. And I thought that this just really, to me, looks boho. But anyway, guys, that is what I've got going on. Um, and then I also, I haven't started this yet, but this is just something I saw today. Have you guys seen the... Um, Okay, um, it's called Lost and Found by, I absolutely have no idea how to say this, and I'm going to butcher the crap out of it, but I'm just going to say it how it looks. Um, Quarto Matrage. I know that's not how you say that. It's probably like Matrahe or something. Quarto Matrahe? Um, but anyway about it, I will put that in the description box or pop it up on the screen or something so you can actually read it. Um, I just saw a short... Um, a short it's like a short film I saw my sister sent it to me on TikTok and it is an amigurumi like stop motion film and it is so sad don't watch it unless you're like prepared some tissues and are ready to have like an emotional moment I watched it multiple times now and literally it like made me cry um but now I have to make those amigurumi characters and it is a dinosaur and a fox and so I am looking for a pattern for those. I only looked very briefly and so far the only one I found is in Spanish. Um, so I might be translating that one into English, uh, US English crochet terminology and doing that one. Um, but I got to make them. I'm not going to go more into it in case you guys want to watch it. It's sad though, but I will, it, whenever I do get to this project, I will go more into the little story behind it and why I want to make them. But if you watch it, you'll see why. Um, but yeah, so that's the other thing that I've kind of got going on. So I've kind of got like a lot of ideas and a lot of whips going and, or the start of things going. Um, but I'm pretty excited, um, for all these projects that I've got. Oh, and I got polyfill today, so I can finally work on that cat again. <laughs> the, um, cat that I'm making for my little brother for his birthday um, that I was also working on a tutorial for that I had to stop working on because I ran out of polyfill. So I need to do that. That's what I'm going to do when I get done making this video actually um, is get that done. But um, was that it? I think that's it. So I've got kind of a lot of things going on. But anyway, I'm going to get into my email. I'm going to get out those community spotlight entries that you guys have sent in and I'm going to edit this video up and get it uploaded for you guys. I know it is later in the day, so I'm sorry about uh, the video being uploaded later. Like I said, I did just get home and like immediately started filming. Um, but yeah, so I had a really, really good day actually. Um, and I hope you guys did too. Let me know uh, in the comments if you did anything fun today or if you have anything fun planned for the weekend and make sure that you set aside some time for yourself. Make sure you take some time for yourself today, this weekend, whenever you can eke some time in, make that time. Even if there isn't time for it, make that time. Five minutes here, five minutes there. If you can have a whole hour, a whole day, that's awesome. You know, take a hot bath, do whatever it is that's going to bring you some joy. Get yourself a nice coffee or a nice tea, maybe read a book, crochet, watch like whatever it is like that's your like little guilty pleasure tv show like do something that's just for you not because you gotta do it not because you're trying to like meet a deadline or you're trying to take care of someone else or please someone else or not something that you need to do do something that you want to do oh and that reminds me one more thing that i actually saw um and that i was gonna relay to you guys because i thought it was really cool it was um, when you're thinking of, I should do something like uh, I should go mow the lawn or I should not be eating this or I should this or I should that. That should is coming from a place of shame. It was like um, should is could, but with shame. Like the SH is from shame, I guess. Um, and that instead of saying you should do something, try replacing it with I want to do this thing or I need to do this thing. And if it's not true, if you don't need to do this thing or you don't want to do this thing, ask yourself where that voice is coming from. Why do you think you should do something or you shouldn't do something? Is it like a societal pressure? Is it just like a thing that has been ingrained into your mind that you shouldn't do just because because society deems it so like 
because other people might judge you for it or something not because it's actually a big deal like are you shaming yourself when you don't need to be shaming yourself and like stop that like think about it that way and stop that be like no I'm not gonna shame myself I don't if I don't need to do it or I don't want to do it I don't have to like think of it in that should or should not kind of mindset I thought that was like actually really profound and like really thought provoking and I think that that could um be a big game changer in the way that we think about things. So I thought I would share that with you guys. Uh, all right, guys, so here is going to be Community Spotlight. Let's get into it. I will see you guys on the next video, and I hope you guys are staying know me and having a great day. Bye, guys.